Good morning, Fishers Tigers. I'm Joseph Basso, and welcome to FHS Weekly. Moving on with guidance. Seniors, new scholarships are available. The Hamilton County Extension Health and Human Sciences Scholarship is for seniors planning on majoring in a field of health and human sciences or elementary education at Purdue. Apply by March 1st. The Watercolor Society Scholarship is for seniors planning to pursue a degree in either fine arts, arts education, or an art-related field. Apply by March 6th. The ISTA scholarship is for seniors who have a parent or grandparent that is a member of the Indiana State Teachers Association. Apply by April 1st. Please visit FHS, Naviance, or the Guidance Office for more details. Seniors, more scholarships are available. The Hamilton County Artist Association scholarship is for seniors planning to major in a field of fine arts as an art major. Apply by March 13th. The Carmel American Legion Scholarship is for seniors who have a parent or grandparent that is a Legion Post 155 member. Apply by March 15th. The Old Town Design Group Scholarship is for seniors planning to major in a house-related program such as construction management or engineering. Apply by March 18th. Please visit FHS website and Aviance or the Guidance Office for more details. Hey there, Fishers Tigers. Welcome back to Tiger Talk, the segment of the show where we talk about topical topics at a table. My name is Joe Heemster. Joining me today, we have Marina Watkins and Cam White. And Tigers, those of you who are fans of the popular reality show, The Bachelor, you know that things are starting to heat up. Peter, you're going to have to make a decision at some point real soon here. But I thought this would be a good opportunity to talk about reality shows kind of as a whole, reality television. Um... I think it's just a very interesting thing that we kind of just take for granted because it's so commonplace in kind of our entertainment uh, appetites. So I got to ask you guys, how much reality television do you guys watch? Not very much. I have to be honest with you. Probably the most reality TV I've watched is The Office, and I know that's not even really a reality TV show. Mm -hmm. So that's where I am on reality TV. Okay, interesting. How about you, Marina? Um, I religiously watch The Bachelor. Mm -hmm. Fantasy Suites are tonight. It's going to be intense. I'm so excited. Past that, I have... I've had, like, you know, the cooking show phases where I'm like, oh, I'm going to be a chef when I'm older because obviously I can pull off Cake Boss. But I don't think I watch anything as much as The Bachelor, personally. Sure, okay. I mean, I personally don't watch television hardly at all anyway, much less reality shows. All that information in the intro was stuff Marina told me to say. (laughs) So... I'm kind of going into this with a blank perspective. Yeah, I'm um, not that familiar with The Bachelor myself, so... Mm-hmm. Um, Victoria F. needs to go. She if you, needs to go. Do you think you could, like, give a little breakdown of, like, of what's how... what's happening? Or oh, just, yeah, like, how the show works in general. The how, because, how the show works. <laughs> I don't so, even know. a lot of people are watching... I've noticed the show's, like, grown in popularity a lot recently, which mm-hmm. is why I wanted to address it, along with just the general topic of reality TV. Sure. But essentially, there's, there's The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, which means either there's a guy and, like, 30 girls, or there's a girl and, like, 30 guys. And they're all competing to at the end of the show they'll get married or proposed but the end goal is to you know have a husband or wife Mm -hmm. essentially so every week they have group dates or one-on-one dates and people keep getting eliminated via the rose ceremony where the Mm. in this season peter hands a rose and if you don't get a rose you go home Mm. so currently we are now down to three girls and it is fantasy suite Mm -hmm. and the next week is going to be like the big finale where he will either propose or not propose hopefully it's getting tense yeah it's very tense but okay anticipation is building so but that's interesting that you say that you know because we have reality shows and like i said they're very common and when you really think about like the premise of them some of them are kind of i don't want to say weird but some of them are kind of out there you know because it's like you you turn Mm -hmm. essentially dating into a show Inter- entertainment yeah. that people watch right? and then and then how genuine is it at that point sure mm-hmm. that's an interesting yeah it's an interesting point. I actually did start watching this dating show on Netflix because it was like recommended so I'm mm-hmm. not actually into these dating shows not uh, not to get at you Marina got to make the saying. disclaimer so this one is like dating behind walls and so I think the um, they don't see the people so they're making connections mm-hmm. just by talking and I mean, it's kind of interesting, but like as a viewer, you're kind of like left feeling a little bit awkward because it's like they're having these awkward conversations, and it's like, how do you how do you normalize it 
like without music and like I don't know it's just the way they execute it like the awkwardness just kind of rubs off on you yeah it just feels like awkward like as you would imagine but Mm -hmm. I would check that out I mean it's kind of interesting so dating behind walls I think is what it's called check it out it's really interesting so I mean but yeah that is kind of weird though like you were saying that is a weird so um, so do you guys think that it's okay that we kind of take people's lives and we take these things that you know, in theory, I mean, dating should be kind of like behind walls, you know, like you shouldn't be Mm -hmm. spectating people dating, but we do for entertainment. And is that okay? Like, is that something that we need to... Like morally? I mean, we are essentially exploiting people's lives for our own personal entertainment. Mm -hmm. Um, So honestly, eh, but it's, I feel like people don't care because entertainment industry can make money off of it. And when there's money, things aren't going to change like True. that. Now, you say that we're exploiting people's lives, but I feel like sometimes, like, the actors or the people who mm-hmm. are in the shows are kind of in on it, mm-hmm. right? Like, they... Yeah, a lot of it is definitely the producers. Like, if you watch The Bachelor, the whole Chase Rice incident, definitely the producers is putting that, that together. Um, one of the girl's ex-boyfriends is, like, a famous country singer, mm. and they had him perform for them, and uh. it was very uncomfortable. So, but that, like, you're definitely in your head, like... <laughs> Oh, the producers wow. definitely probably knew that and yes. put him specifically oh. to sing for them. I'm sure. To create some drama. So a lot of it is probably planned. Mm-hmm. Or I don't know if you guys have heard of the show called Unreal, but it's basically like, it's not reality TV, but it's about reality TV mm-hmm. and like how planned it really is. And mm-hmm. it's really interesting. Yeah, that is really interesting. Um, but also, I would think that um, the contestants are putting their themselves on the line too, just when they true. sign up for the show. So Very they true. like know what they're getting themselves into, mm-hmm. and they know that their life is going to be broadcast in front of everybody. Mm-hmm. And I think that if you're doing that yourself, then there's probably like you have something to gain from that yourself. Mm-hmm. It's you're not yeah. just focused on the show. And I, I remember reading like articles and stuff about um, like the one that sticks out in my mind right now is I think he was a former contestant mm-hmm. on The Bachelorette. And uh, Demi Lovato actually like tweeted or so, like oh gosh, put stuff Mike. on her Instagram. I think yeah, and oh so like they had like a brief little thing or something like that. And Tyler dated like Gigi Hadid, so these people yeah mm-hmm. they can date some like famous. So people it kind of opens up the door to get you in like good it, with yeah. like celebrities and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I just wanted five to, seconds of fame. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Um, I just really quick wanted to kind of like regress a little bit and say that like this whole reality television thing is not a new concept. Like, this has been around since before television, actually. So, like, one of the oldest reality shows that I could find, like, on record is was called Candid Camera, where basically um, it was in, like, the 50s, I think. They would have a camera filming people react to, like, pranks and stuff like that, which kind of sounds like YouTube videos now that, you know, yeah. now that you think about it. Mm-hmm. But before that, before the television came out, they had candid microphone which was a radio show with kind of the same premise so this really isn't like a new thing that we're seeing um but like it's only in like different ways they change it in like the smallest ways exactly exactly and then make their own tv shows because there's like hundreds of them these days Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh yeah would you guys yourselves ever participate in a reality tv show it might depend on what it is um i think that because cam you said that you watch the office right yeah and that's like not a true reality show but i think it definitely takes inspiration from it like it mm-hmm. all, like it makes fun kind of of the reality show format so yeah. if it were something like the office like yeah i participate in that cuz that's i just think fun. there's not really <laughs> there's totally. not really self awareness in these reality shows and that's mm-hmm. why i don't really think that i could see myself doing it like <laughs> I feel like these people are all, like, hopeless romantics, and they're, like, really just trying to find love. Which is why I would go on The Bachelor first. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, call yeah, yourself exactly. out. So, I mean, on. I don't know. I can't see myself on a real, reality TV show. Maybe, like, Beyond Scared Straight or something oh, yeah. that was, like, mm-hmm. fun. Mm-hmm. Like, I could see myself, like, naked and afraid, but mm-hmm. not actually naked, but, like... I don't know. That would be cool. Just some fun to do. Like Survivor, maybe? Yeah, like Survivor. Yeah. I mean, kind of same boat. I don't really see myself getting that serious about, like, The Bachelor or anything like that. So, I don't know. And Marina, I think we all know your answer. Yep. (laughs) All right. Well, that's all the time we have for today, Tigers. We hope you enjoyed this discussion. Feel free to tune in on social media, throw your thoughts and opinions out there, and we'll see you next week. 
Hey Tigers, Sophia Solis here with my extra fine eyeliner. I've got some awesome announcements in store for you. A huge congratulations to Electrum Sound, Silver Shadows, and Silver Lining for their incredible success at the Center Grove's Best of the Midwest Show Choir Invitational on February 15th. That Saturday, Electrum and Sound were both named Grand Champions, winning both the Best Vocal and Visual Captions in their respective divisions. Electrum was also awarded Best Costumes and Overall Best General Effect. Show Choir soloists were also recognized. Kayla Wilkerson won Best Female Soloist in a Show. In the solo competition, Savannah Jensen earned first runner-up, and Simon Mayer earned second runner-up. Way to go, Tiger Show Choirs! Calling all experienced and inexperienced actors. Theater Fishers will be having auditions for the One Acts on March 3rd after school in the Black Box. I, alongside the Advanced Theater class, will be directing this year. Make sure to prepare a 45 second to one minute monologue, keeping in mind that most of the One Acts are comedic. Callbacks will be on March 5th. Contact Miss Nickel with any further questions. Hope to see you there. Up next is the new episode of Iconically You, featuring Fisher's very own Mason Gushua. Thank you for all the positive feedback on this series. As always, follow us on Instagram at FHS Weekly News and my Instagram and YouTube at Iconically Her. Stay fabsome. Bye. Hi, my name's Mason Gushua Williams, and this is what makes me Iconically Me. Um, I'd say a lot of people like my style and a lot of people can gain inspiration from it. Um, I'm definitely an aspiring fashion person um, slash pastry slash chef slash actor slash dancer. I don't know, aspiring to be everything, I guess. <laughs> so both of my parents are chefs. Um, I've known ever since I was like, I don't know, maybe six that I wanted to be a pastry chef when I grow up. Um, so after high school, I want to move to Florida and go to culinary school. So sixth grade, I knew that I wanted to do something musical. My sister had played piano like since a young age, and so I always knew that I wanted to like play piano or something like that. Um, and so yeah, that's how I decided to get into music. And then winter percussion was just kind of a branch off of that because I'm also a very like outgoing person and like dancing and that type of thing is really cool. And so winter percussion does a good job of combining both of those things. So winter percussion is basically you combine like theater slash percussion music um, and it's basically just like a whole like production. Um, a lot of people don't know what it is um, and it's honestly something that's really hard to explain. It's something that's a lot easier to just like see it and you're like oh my gosh like I did not know that was a thing but then like when you see it, it's like oh my god that's so cool. It's a combination of the music and the people you're around. Um, it's just like a indescribable feeling of just overwhelmingly like being joyful and like happy um honestly i don't think there's a better way to like put it other than like you just need to be there <laughs> so my journey of self-love um has been a roller coaster um when i was 12 years old i lived in elkhart indiana and it wasn't a very like good place to be who I wanted to be now. Um, it was really like ghetto and like hood. Yeah, just like not a place that I could be who I wanted to be. Um, so then I moved here when I was in the middle of seventh grade and I was finally like able to see like who um, I was meant to be and like what God had in store for me. Um, and then I could kind of like bloom from there. So I guess like definitely a really like good message is, you know, no matter what you're going through, it's definitely gonna make you a stronger person. And I know it doesn't really seem like that right now, but yeah. Honestly, I just like the journey that I've taken so far. And I know that like, this is still like a mid, like I'm, high school is not like, you know, like most people's like blossoming points. Um, but I guess where I am right now, like I can really see myself like blossoming in my future. And I think that's something really cool because a lot of people don't really like know what they want to do in high school and stuff like that. And just knowing my exact path and what like I know like all the potential that I have for my life is something that's really cool. If I had one thing to leave you guys with, it would be love yourself, A, because no one can love you if you don't love yourself. Um, and just don't be afraid to be like truly yourself. I think that's a really big thing. Um, be authentic to yourself. Don't try and be someone that you're not meant to be. Thanks for watching. Check out Iconically Her on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And you can follow Mason on his Instagram. Mace the Mixed Kid. If you or someone you know is iconic and deserves to be featured on an episode of Iconically You, email us at iconicallyher at gmail.com. 
And as always, stay, stay fabsome! <laughs>